Uh, hi everyone, welcome to uh, CMU. Uh, this is Junyan Zhu, um, assistant professor at RI and as well as CSD and MLD. Uh, I'm mostly interested in computer vision, uh, computer graphics, and machine learning. So today I will talk about how we can use machine learning uh, to help humans create visual content. Throughout history, people have created visual content in various forms, uh, from the ancient cave art to sculpture. Uh, to impressionist paintings by Carl Monet. Uh, to more recently, we have 3D computer graphics. Uh, this is one of my uh, favorite movies, Life of Pi, which tells an adventurous story of a little boy with a giant Bengal tiger. But who are the creators behind this amazing work? It turns out that only a few chosen talents can do the work. The well-known sculptors and painters but as well as uh, award-winning film directors. Why is that? Because content creation requires huge amounts of time, expertise, and manual efforts. Uh, for example, in a movie, a visual artist has to specify everything just correct, including the skeleton, uh, to geometry, uh, to, to the texture, uh, to very small details like tiger's fur for a human to perceive this image as realistic. As a result, it took hundreds of artists to have months and 60 million budget to create this content. But what about the rest of us who may not have 60 million? What can we do if we want to express ourselves visually? So in my lab, our long-term research goal is to help everyone uh, create visual content more easily. Our approach is to first teach machines how to create realistic visual content automatically. The machines can do all the tedious work and fill in the details given humans high level instructions. A recent example is Pix to Pix, uh, in which we use the idea of conditional GANs and use it to translate an image from one domain into another. So during the training, the model uh, takes thousands or even millions of input out of pairs and learn this mapping. And in, in test time, it can produce realistic content uh, given test images. So our friend Chris developed an online interface called Edge to Cats based on Pix to Pix. So here the link is at the bottom right corner. So here's the another one, and here is how how the, how the interface looks like. You you sketch some 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 cats and then you, you press button and you get a get the result. It's quite easy. And here are some more crazy cats uh, created by our users. So after several years of development. We present a more recent system called Gauguin, um, which, 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 which can produce realistic output given the semantic layout. Here, an artist was uh, demoing Gauguin in front of 5,000 audience. And he creates some mountains. Some mountains are quite close to camera, some mountains are quite far from camera. They have different effects. And you can keep adding beach, and you can add some details like that, like the rocks. And you can create an image within two or three minutes on, on a stage. You can create add more cloud. And after you are done with the layout, you can choose a, a style image, try to transfer that style to that to this output. It's being used by concept artists and art directors at major uh, film studios. The idea is you can quickly create a concept image using our system before you do a very expensive 3D modeling. But the above method um, requires huge amounts of uh, supervision. You, to train a model, it requires tens or thousands or millions of pairs. Sometimes it's expensive to collect these pairs. Sometimes it requires some artistic authoring. And uh, more often times, uh, it's infeasible to collect these pairs. Given a horse, you can't, you can't ask a zebra to do the same pose as the horse in the original image. Therefore, it will be desirable if we can have an unsupervised learning method. In this setting, the only thing we have is a clashing of images from domain X and a clashing of images from domain Y. And the algorithm needs to learn the mapping. In such cases, given an input horse, all we know is that the output should look like a zebra. We can do this by adding adversarial loss on the output and check if a image is a real zebra or a fake zebra. But that's not enough, and, and because a horse can map to multiple zebras, 
we need some uh, additional constraints. Hill proposed to cycle consistent constraints in the sense if we translate a sentence from English to French, if we use some Google translation. And even I don't know anything about French, I can use the translation again to translate the French um, to English, back to English, and we should arrive at the same sentence. And the same idea here, if we translate a horse into a zebra, we can add an absurd loss, but we can also translate it back from zebra to horse. And we should expect, um, we should, uh, should arrive at the same horse. We can measure it using the image reconstruction loss. We can do the same thing for the other directions. I'll call our master cycle again. Let's look at some results. Here, cycle again is to transform a horse uh, in, into zebra. Here, another example. And uh, we can apply the model to a video as well. We can also trans apply this cycle again on different kind of data. Here uh, is a photo uh, taken in France and we can translate it into different artistic styles. Here, UKOE is a is an art style from Japan. Uh, here in my Zoom background, I also tra translate my cat and dog uh, into UKOE style. More recently, I, I think um, I consider generating model uh, differently. But before, in, in the previous work, I saw generative model can automate the human written image processing code. But more recently, I think the generative model as a new form of visual data. It's a data itself. We need to consider it as an object, as a data, rather than it's a function or program. So if it's a data, we can visualize the data. I'm, I'm quite interested in how to visualize the generative models how can we know what units is doing what, what neuron is doing what, how can we understand how this model is, is, is what, what, how this model is working, what kind of images it can produce. And if it's data, we can also need to consider how to store the data. How can we store the generative models and more efficiently and more compactly? So we are interested in compress the generative model like GANs and make it a smaller model and also make it less faster. It's like you are compressing a JPEG image, once the image is smaller, you can upload and download it much faster. Here, once the model is smaller, you can express much faster. I'm also interested in how a user can edit a model. So here it's quite interesting, uh, a new perspective. It's given, a, given an input model, we try to edit this model. We're not editing the image, we're editing the model's weights. When, once you edit the model's weights, you can, you can generate a whole bunch of new effects. For example, trees on top of the, on top of the tower. And you can, you can generate an infinite number of images with this effect. So here, how it works, we annotate a few uh, tower locations and, the, and we grab a tree from one of the images. And then we place this tree on top of a tower and place, place it accurately. And now we can change the weights so that the model always generates the trees on top of the tower. And this will allow artists or users to customize a model after it is trained to, to, to author and to create a new model, a very creative model, which you cannot learn it from data, data set. So in this talk, I mainly focus on learning-based methods for gener image generation, but I'm also, I'm also, also interested in a wide range of graphics problem, as well as 3D and videos. I was also fortunate enough to corroborate research from other fields like Im computational imaging, robotics, and other research fields. So I'm happy to talk about any project offline. So in conclusion, we have seen all different ways of creating visual content. Uh, they are powered by online technology from the Earth's pigment to modern computers and 3D graphics. In this talk, I pre present a new perspective and in our group, we are working toward this perspective. And we are trying to work on the new algorithm as well as new interactive tools for millions of users to use. And more recently, I'm interested in visualizing, compressing, and editing models and treat models as data rather than a function.